All right, a little bit of a disclaimer. I main medic in TF2, yet I'm in no way a professional medic player, nor have I played in a TF2 league. However, a lot of what I will be talking about comes from personal experience in playing the class, as well as watching other people play medic. A lot of these principles will apply in the casual scene, but can also be applied to a more competitive playstyle. I will also not be going too in-depth into Medic's arsenal or how to play him either, as videos will be done on those separately. Hopefully in this video and possible future series, I will be able to provide a deeper look into Medic as a class. Medic is genuinely fun to play and I want to help others understand how to make the most out of their experience as a Medic. You ready? Let's get into it. Medic, I could go on and on about you. You are a very special class. You're so wanted in the casual scene, but yet no one wants to play you. Medic can come across as very unappealing to a lot of people, since he's not really doing the dirty work. He's sort of in a strange midground where he's in the action, but not a part of the action. Yet this definitely does not make him any less important to the game. He's arguably one of the most important classes in TF2. While Medic isn't necessarily on the front line, he has a very difficult job. Healing. You thought just left-clicking was going to be the case here? Yes! You're joking, right? Oh. Medic is definitely easy in principle, but an execution is a whole different story. Medic has a lot of personal responsibilities, as I like to think of them. Ooh. Playing Medic means you're always on guard, making sure you're positioned well, prioritizing your healing targets, using your uber charge at the right time. <laughs> it seems like playing this class is impossible. However, all we need to do is just break it down. We're going to start with Medic, and then his arsenal, and then some of the loadouts you could try. Let's get started. Medic has a base health pool of 150 health, making him a little more resistant to damage than scouts, snipers, spies, and engineers, whose health pools are at 125 health. Medic is the only class that naturally self-heals, starting at 3 health per second, which can eventually scale up to 6 health in 10 seconds. Medic's base speed is at 107%, making him the second fastest class in TF2, matching Spy's speed and being right behind Scout, who's at 133% speed. Medic can see the health of his team members to determine if they need healing. When a team member presses E on their keyboard, they call out for Medic. Speech bubble with the heal symbol will pop above their head. Medic can even see this speech bubble through walls, giving him a better idea of where that team member is. The speech bubble will also deepen in color to red if they need urgent healing. Your screen will have arrows that point in that player's direction, as if those e-spamming scouts aren't catching your attention already. Pretty straightforward. Now, let's move on to Medic's weapons and Mediguns. Medic has two sources of damage and one for healing. Medic's primaries are in the form of different syringe guns and his melee in the form of saws. Or a bust of Hippocrates? I'm sorry, what? And Medic's main source of external healing is in his Mediguns. Medic has a decent variety of each category of weapon. However, the majority of your time as medic will have you with your medigun out and healing. I mean, if you want to charge forward basically shooting toothpicks at a wall of people, have at it. I want to briefly go over each weapon medic has, just to give small insight into what medic has up his sleeve. Keep in mind that a lot of medic syringe guns use projectiles, so timing is absolutely critical in order to deal any healing or damage. My choice of loadouts will be discussed later in the video. The first weapon that you're greeted with as a new player choosing medic is the somewhat pitiful yet necessary stock syringe gun. Array7, another TF2 YouTuber, goes more into detail about the stock syringe gun and what its purpose seems to serve as a beginner medic. It's a great video and I'll link it in the description if you'd like to check it out. This gun is more of a last defensive effort when you've either been abandoned by your team or there's a pesky spy or scout that your team won't turn around and notice after screaming in voice chat. It does reliable damage if you can predict where your enemy is going, though. The next primary is the Blutsauger. This syringe gun is the one you'll see affiliated with battle medics. This syringe gun heals you by 3 health per successful hit on an enemy, but your self-healing rate is reduced by 2 health per second. This is a much better syringe gun in 1v1s, since you basically heal as soon as you get hurt. I have used this syringe gun when escaping cocky scouts, oh, hey. and it's really funny to see them to keep trying. 
The Boot Sogger allows you to gain your health back, increasing the time that the enemy needs to kill you. It is more of an offensive weapon, however it still works great on defense. But when you're in a pinch or just want to go a neck deep into the enemy team to see what happens, more power to you. The Overdose is the next syringe gun. This one is arguably one of the more niche syringe guns, as it serves more as a utility than an actual weapon. The Overdose grants a medic with a speed boost dependent on how full his uber charge meter is. The speed boost isn't really noticeable until a medic has about 50-75% to uber charge. Even then, that syringe gun has to be out and active in order for the boost to kick in. Zesty Jesus made a fantastic video going into the statistics and his use of the Overdose. Link in the description. This syringe gun rewards medics for properly healing and helps them escape faster in times of need. The only real downside is the 15% damage penalty to the gun if you do have to use it. In simpler terms, if you heal good, you escape good. The final primary in question is the Crusader's Crossbow. This gun is considered a part of the medic meta and varies greatly from the rest of medic's primary options. Rather than a barrage of syringes, the crossbow is a single fire weapon, which can actually heal team members that are hit or harm an enemy that is hit. The amount of healing or harm done is dependent on how far the medic is from his target. The further away he is, the greater the healing or harm is done. Healing caps out at 150 health and damage at 75. The crossbow greatly increases medic's healing range from his medigun's beam length to literally anywhere on the map. Even better, you don't have to have the crossbow out and active to reload it. You can quickly switch between crossbowing your engineer, who's on the run from a scout, to healing the heavy who's in front of you, taking a barrage of bullets and fire. There are very few impactful downsides with this weapon, and I can tell you, nothing is more satisfying than landing an air shot on your rocket jumping soldier that's about to die to fall damage, or out sniping that sniper that's been trying to nail you all game. <laughs> However, you greatly sacrifice your chances of survival if you're caught alone with an enemy. Alright, now the guns that make the magic happen. Before we go too deep into the secondaries, let's discuss some of the important aspects of each medigun. All mediguns provide overheal, which temporarily increases your healing target's base health pool so long as you have the beam connected to them. All of the secondaries also allow you to match the running speed of your healing target, so long as it's faster than your base speed. The mediguns are a bit more complex when it comes to the amount of damage taken and a certain amount of time, so I'm mostly just going to be discussing base healing rates and the different ubercharges. First up is the stock medigun. Personally, I swear by this as one of the most reliable mediguns. Its base healing rate of 24 health per second is nothing to scoff at. Spreading heals is relatively easy with this gun. And by spreading heals, I mean how quickly you can switch between healing targets to keep them alive. Stock Medigun provides a 150% base health pool on your healing target, boosting heavies from 300 health to 450, and all other classes to survive a non-charged sniper headshot. Where this Medigun shines is with its uber charge. Stock Uber Charge allows you as the medic and your healing target to become invincible to all forms of damage for a full 8 seconds. This tool allows the healing target to either wipe out the enemy team or destroy sentry nests put up by engineers. While medic is uber charging, this is the best opportunity for the rest of your team to move up on the objective, as an ubered medic and his target cannot capture the objective. Medic is great at creating time for his team to move in, and this is one of the many reasons why he's one of the most valuable team members in an effectively communicating team. The next medigun on the chopping block is the Kritzkrieg. Visually, the only thing different from the stock medigun is the different barrel. However, the uber charge is very different from stock. The Kritzkrieg has the same base healing properties as the stock medigun. However, when medic ubers, him and his healing target are not invincible to any damage. The Crits Krieg guarantees the healing target 100% critical hits, and is extremely powerful when used on a demo man, heavy, or soldier. As an added bonus, an ubered medic and his target can capture an objective. To be honest, I didn't know that you could capture the objective as a Crits Krieg medic. I play with the crits so little that I didn't even know that. The Crits Krieg tends to leave you in moments where you think you have the stock medigun and expect your target to mow down an enemy sentry, only free to remember that critical hits don't affect sentries. 
The Chris Krieg is strange in that it's most effective when you're already riping the floor with an enemy. It just kind of adds more salt to the wound. Ooh, my second most favorite medigun is next, the quick fix. There are a lot of deeper statistics with this medigun, but I'll still go over it as it's so fun to play with and pair with different primary and melee options. The quick fix differs from the previous guns as the base heal rate is changed from 24 health per second to about 33 to 34 health per second. Not only that, you gain your uber charge 10% faster. That doesn't seem like a lot at face value, but considering how any form of uber charge is a huge deal in TF2, this is a massive advantage that this medigun has. The only downside is that the overheal is reduced by 50%. In my opinion, one of the best aspects of the quick fix is that you essentially become Superman. The quick fix allows you to copy the rocket jumping motions of a soldier or the speed of a shield charging demo man. You can literally fly. Not only is this fun as all get out, but it's an important tool when trying to get to a battle quicker. I've had plenty of scenarios where I've rocket jumped as medic into the enemy line, just to, for a risky uber saw stab, or just to take out an enemy sniper. Anyway, the uber charge of this medigun differs greatly as well. Rather than invincibility or critical hits, you get mega heal. You heal yourself and your target three times faster once activated and are immune to any blast forces like rockets and air blasts. I myself have fallen victim to being air blasted away from my target with stock uber charge, so the quick fix is mostly a middle finger to pyros. You're still susceptible to backstabs and large burst damage, unfortunately. Unlike the Crits Creek, you cannot capture the objective. And like the Crits Creek, the quick fix is not as effective as dealing with sentries. However, it is still a viable option if your healing target is focused enough to take it out. The last minigun to discuss is the Vaccinator. With this gun, you either love it or hate it. That goes for your team or the enemy team. The Vaccinator has the highest skill ceiling of all the mediguns, as a quick reflex and managing your uber charges is key. Rather than healing quicker or providing critical hits to your healing target, you give them a temporary resistance to three types of damage. While healing, you have a 10% damage resistance to the type of damage you choose. The Vaccinator can make you and your target resistant to bullet damage, explosive damage, and fire damage. When you uber charge, your target receives a 75% resistance to the chosen incoming damage. You can also stack resistances on top of each other, so long as you have the charges to do so. You can switch the resistance given by pressing R before you activate the charge. This medigun is the most annoying to deal with, as that sniper's 150 damage headshot, it just got denied and turned into 38 damage. That barrage of enemy rockets and bullets coming your way down a choke point, click R click. Erase from existence. The Bone Saw. Old reliable, pretty much what you would expect for a melee weapon. It's more of a last resort that can get you out of a sticky situation. The base swing speed is pretty fast and it can deter most enemies from getting too close. Ah uh, yes, the Uber Saw. Yet another victim to the medic meta. The Ubersaw is a great utility to punish enemy team members for getting too risky and trying to take you out. When the Ubersaw hits an enemy, you gain 25% Uber. That is a lot of Uber, and considering how many situations people switch to melee just to get a few swings on you, you can definitely get a full charge from a wild situation. Very rarely, but it does happen, you may find yourself with 75% or more Uber, and you're wedged in between the enemy lines. If you can quickly, and I mean quickly, get a swing on an enemy member and get full uber charge, you can pop your uber and save yourself from a very embarrassing situation. And it looks cool as hell. The only downside is that there is a 20% slower swing speed, so you gotta make those swings count. Cool fact about the uber saw. The current percentage of your uber charge is represented by the saw. The vial in the center can change its level depending on the uber charge. The next melee is the Amputator. I have found myself using the saw a lot more frequently. If you consider yourself a medic that has a hard time keeping up with everybody screaming medic at you, and all of your team members are within a good proximity to you, you can heal a large group of people by simply pressing G or right clicking. 
This saw is more niche, just like how the overdose has its place as more of a utility. The stars kind of need to be aligned with the saw. If you have a quick fix and only have two healing targets around you, it's pretty pointless to start practicing the violin at that point in time. You probably could have healed your friends within the four seconds it took to complete that taunt. The major downside of the amputator is the 20% damage reduction, making it more like a portable dispenser for your team. Ugh. Okay, so the Vitus Saw is in a very weird place. In concept, it's one of the greatest things to come to medics since sandwiches were in the game. In practice, it's a bit of a different story. The Vitus Saw is supposed to preserve your Uber charge upon death, at least up to 60% of it. On hit, the Vitus Saw is to collect 15% Uber in the form of organs. But unlike the Uber Saw where the Uber is immediately ready for use, the collected Uber can only be used after the medic dies and respawns. So if you have 75% Uber and get a few swings on an enemy, you're not rewarded for punishing a cocky player. What's even a bit more bizarre is that if you kill a demo man with heads, a sniper with collected headshots, a soldier with the airstrike, or even another medic with the Vitasaw, the organs gained is relative to those stats. But if you're close enough to any of those types of players, then you're being a little bit too ambitious in your endeavors. It's convoluted. I'm gonna be honest, I have had no interest in using the Vitasaw. It's way too niche for its own good. Preserving Ubercharge is nothing to scoff at, but the scenarios that this melee calls for is just way too specific for anything to happen. To top it all off, your health pool as a medic is reduced by 10%. That just seems to add insult to injury. In short, if you want to test this out, go ahead, but I doubt you'll have too much fun with this weapon. You want to walk around carrying irony at its core? Well, my friends, I present to you the Solemn Vow. There's nothing like showing your support for the Hippocratic Oath than beating your enemies to death with its creator. The idea of seeing your enemy's uber charge levels and health is amazing, but if you have an enemy in your sights, it's likely they have you in theirs. In my opinion, it's not worth the risk to peek at a heavy to determine his vitality. The only red text for this weapon is the 10% slower swing speed. Alright, now it's time to talk about some of my favorite loadouts while playing Medic. Now, of course, this isn't saying these are specific loadouts you have to use or the only ones that are effective in order to play Medic. You can mix and match, like if you want to use the Quick Fix with the Overdose or if you even want to use the Solemn Vow or Vitasaw with the Kritzkrieg. Completely up to you. It's your game, your way to play. The first loadout that I usually resort to revolves around the stock medigun. My goal is to keep my teammates alive as long as possible, as well as to blast through any defenses that the enemy may have. In my experience, this loadout is most effective when it comes to covering all your bases. You have your crossbow, which allows you to reach longer distances, as well as your healing targets. Your stock medigun allows you to burst through sentry nests and to guarantee any protection from incoming fire. Your ubersaw denies any players from getting too close, and if there is a cocky spy that doesn't realize you know that he's there, you can catch him off guard and get yourself a free 25% or more uber, bringing you that much closer to dominating the other team. Now, I don't use the Kritzkrieg that often, however, I like to have this loadout slot available whenever I get the chance. Sometimes, if our team is doing really, really well, or I just kind of want to goof around, I'll use the Kritzkrieg. So, my loadout of choice with the Kritzkrieg is going to be a primary with the Crusader's Crossbow, the secondary of, of course, the Kritzkrieg, and my melee of choice being the Amputator. The amputator actually counts towards your uber charge meter so if you happen to get a little bit more uber charge because of that amputator you're able to gain your crits faster ah oh, this loadout is so much fun to play with so the next medi gun we're going to be revolving around is the quick fix the quick fix is so fun to work with Number one, you get to heal people so much faster. Honestly, it gets a lot of people off my back when they're calling for a medic. Secondly, it's so fun to fly around while following a rocket jumping soldier or a shield charging demo man. It can definitely get you into some questionable places, but regardless, it's the one that's the most fun to work with. This one isn't the greatest at playing the objective, but it's still a blast. 
So my choice with the quick fix is going to be the Crusader's crossbow, the quick fix, as well as the amputator. You become a lean, mean healing machine. The last loadout revolves around the vaccinator. Now, the vaccinator in pubs is very different from when it's used in community servers. In pubs, it's usually used to fight against bots. But when I usually play in community servers, you have higher skilled players and usually no bots. Therefore, your experience is going to be very different. So when I play in community servers, my choice of loadout is going to be a primary of the overdose, secondary of the vaccinator, and the melee being the uber saw. Now, I choose the overdose because the vaccinator allows you to easily see what level of uber you are at. And that determines if you can make a quick getaway. I use the uber saw with the vaccinator because 25% is all it takes for one charge of the vaccinator. So if you get one swing on a spy or an enemy team member, you can quickly get your charge and leave. And with that, this video comes to a close. If you did enjoy it, please feel free to like and share it. Any comments and feedback is greatly appreciated. All right, real talk. Making this video was some of the most fun that I've had in a long time, and I do want to do more. In my The Future of the Channel video, I commented that this vid would be out within a week or so. <laughs> Definitely didn't happen. A couple of roadblocks did come up along the way. SFM was having rendering issues, and if you've watched any of Lazy Purple's videos, you know that SFM isn't exactly cooperative. Um, I was also trying to learn the new editing program, which I used to make this video. It wasn't difficult, it was just learning the ropes, and it was really, really cool to navigate it. Last but not least, I was putting my heart and soul into this. After I realized like the capabilities that the editing software had and how much fun I was having using SFM, I wanted to make some of the best things that I could make. So a lot of effort did go into this video. And if you want to see more high effort content or just want to see more things like this, please let me know. I really do want to continue and share this information with you guys. So like I said, if you really did enjoy it, feel free to like it, share, heck, you could even give me a subscribe. It's completely up to you. So with that, I will see y'all around.